Another day across the NBA and only two teams remain. Turner throws it down with a Tetacupo right there. We are here gathered today to talk about the in-season tournament semi-finals as two teams have to be eliminated. And the earlier game was the two undefeated teams in the Eastern Conference, the Indiana Pacers and the Milwaukee Bucks. Tyrese Halliburton and his squad against Dame, Giannis and their squad. And as expected, the defense was optional early on and the Pacers had really no one to defend Giannis. I know not many teams do, but the Pacers are one of the smaller lesser in protection you know well and even defensively bad teams and they did try to throw more looks on him in terms of defensive coverage of course that is and you know it worked a little bit but still Yanis was pretty unstoppable today and the Pacers bench unit was the unit that actually gave them life early on in this second quarter where they came in and it was Isaiah Jackson, TJ McConnell, Ben Matherin and the squad who came in and turned the game, you know, on its head in a way. I thought the Pacers looked kind of shaky early on and the Bucks could run away with it. But these young guys of the bench came in and they completely changed the energy of the game. And, you know, it was beautiful to see them genuinely play so well off the bench. And, you know, the trust within these young guys and the camaraderie and the joy they play with together is just awesome to watch, man. It is truly remarkable to me. And Miles Turner kept off an incredible second quarter for the Pacers with a deep shot to give the Pacers a 36-22 lead. And fun fact, the Pacers this season are 5-1 when Miles Turner scores 20 or more points. Dame started 0-7 from the field as he inevitably got going against this Pacers defense after he made a couple of layups. And in the third quarter he scored 16 points and the Bucks dominated that quarter 43-28. And completely turned the game on its head. But it was once again that bench unit. Ty J. McConnell, Isaiah Jackson, Ben Matherin, Aaron Neesmith. Who is of course not in the bench unit. But he was out there at the start of the fourth quarter. Just playing their asses off. And it was beautiful to see. And they held on strong at the start of the fourth quarter. Where the tides were shifting Milwaukee's way. Also it helped that campaign played some minutes in that fourth quarter for some reason. And it was Tyrese Halliburton back in. Running the show with Miles Turner. And after Giannis scored his 37th point and made it a 3-point game. Which was, of course, they were down 3 in this term. With 1 minute and 54 seconds left. Tyrese first hit this nasty up and under layup. And then, on a second chance point, hit a nasty step back 3-pointer. And said it's goddamn holly time to Dame as the Pacers free throw themselves to victory there and advanced to the in-season tournament finals. Tyrese Halliburton ended with 27 points, 7 rebounds, 15 assists, 0 turnovers. He had no turnovers in both the in-season tournament knockout games. And the Pacers bench outscored the Bucks bench 43-13. to 13. And there were rumors before the game that Tyrese Halliburton has been recruiting star talent to his team. Pascal Siakam and OG Anunobi were mentioned and I feel like an OG Anunobi would be sensational for them. Probably even a Pascal Siakam, right? But I can't wait to see what Indiana does because this young squad is sensational and they have the cup space, they have the right pieces and if they are able to get Halliburton another guy, ooh, it will be special. It will be goddamn special. And I'm so happy for the Pacers. They're my favorite team to watch besides the Warriors. And I just, lo I just love everyone on this team pretty much. It's wonderful to see. And on the other hand, a disappointing loss for Milwaukee. As they could not capitalize on Giannis' drives. And the bench was awful today. Especially those campaign minutes, like I said. And they just were on weather today. They just got outplayed. Simple as that. Um... Nothing more to add there, man. They lack the... I don't know. The defense is bad. We've, we've known this. The offense has gotten a lot better, but today they were just not able to knock down those shots. And since you can't rely on their defense, funny enough, right, the two defensive player of the year type players, candidates, but that perimeter defense is so bad, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, it's intriguing. Bobby Portis also flamed the shit out of them in the locker room, supposedly. 
which hopefully Nikola Mirotic is okay hearing this. And the Pacers won 128-119 and punched their final tickets. The second game came around with the Pelicans taking on the Lakers. And it was Pelicans with effort wise on offensive glass early on, where they kept themselves in the game offensively with great effort on the rebound on the offensive rebounds. And otherwise it was a really weird start from them. They had a weird energy about them. And they kind of looked, I don't know if they looked shook or if they just weren't ready to play or whatever the case may be. But the Lakers were all over them. A lot of it, of course, is that the Lakers are just really good. They have a lot of tough, you know, matchups for everyone on this league. They have a lot of tough players. They have a lot of length, a lot of size and a lot of guys that can come in and, you know, bother you on both sides of the floor, floor really. And I mean, LeBron, man. The Frey train that LeBron James is in year 22, 21, pardon me. Ooh, I'm sorry, LeBron. I'm sorry, LeBron. I'm sorry, LeBron. <laughs> Three left fuck you threes. But they're third in the league, I think. Into... Long giant. Oh check. my gosh. He check. Oh! He check. And the floor was taken under the Pelicans as they barely had answers, man. The Lakers were too locked in defensively. They were just sensational all around, mate. They had great energy. They were connected defensively. They, you know, the players, the shooters were knocking down their shots. Tarion Prince was knocking down his shots. D'Angelo Russell was knocking down his shots. Austin Reeves was knocking down his shots. And, you know, LeBron, like I said, was very motivated to win this game. And everyone really came in locked in, man. Like, everyone played just great to me, man. It, it was an incredible effort. And in the third quarter... You know, the Lakers pushed the lead as much as 41 points by the end of the four, third quarter. And the game was over essentially where LeBron and AD delivered those daggers halfway or even early on in the third quarter. LeBron with his three ball again and AD with this incredible alley dunk. And like LeBron said, man, he's motivated to win this thing. 9 of 12 from the field, 30 points, 5 rebounds, 8 assists on the night with 0 turnovers. While the Lakers dominated, the, you know, all across the board. And when we go to the other side, the Pelicans, they lack the experience for sure. Uh, the slight regression by Zion, right? He, is, he can be so disengaged defensively. He's not improved much on the offensive side. You could argue he has been worse this year, of course. Well, he has been. You, can, you can't really argue that. He's not been as effective around the rim. He's just not been as good, simple enough. And... You know, they're, of course, still getting fully healthy. They badly had all their guys healthy together. And, you know, the Lakers can say the same, though. And it was a mixture of experience, mixture of just not being ready to play, mixture of their best players just not playing up to their standards or the standards we set for them. And I, I don't know what's going on with Zion, really. I just hope we can see Zion in his best form. That's all I'll say, man. I'm not going to be here and shit on him. Who knows what's going on with him? Uh, he's still a really fun player to watch and I, ju I just hope he finds himself man that's all I can say really I, I hope we can see Zion find his best form man last year he was sensational when he played and I hope he can you know be as good as he was there if not that's also fine you know it's, it's gonna be of course disappointing for us but at the end of the day it's all about him you know being as happy as he can really be I suppose and hopefully there, everything's fine there Let's just put it that way. And the Lakers, man, punched their tickets to the finals with b blowout 133-89. And that does it for today, man. The Vegas atmosphere was kind of meh. And it probably would have been more fun where if it was played, you know, in LA or in Indiana or in Milwaukee. But uh, it is what it is, right? Especially the Pacers-Bucks uh, game. The, the crowd was really rough there, but it also started fairly early. The ESPN, Stephen A. Smith, you know, and inside the NBA crossover was great. And I saw somebody, somebody, I saw Jackson Frank, I'm pretty sure that is on Twitter. And some other guys, I'm not sure who recommended it to him. I just, ah, I should have bookmarked it. But they said they would love to see this being played in Europe. And I was like, mm, that would be a fun idea. But they also pointed out that it would need, you know, the season would need to be literally got them one month longer for that, right? Um... So we'll see. The finals are on Saturday. Should be a fun one. Hopefully the Pacers are up for the draft, which I hope, I mean, I believe they will be, but the Lakers team is no joke, right? But the Pacers aren't a joke themselves, of course. And yeah.
Not many other NBA news, as I anxiously wait for my heart to be broken by Shohei Otani, really. Maybe it has already been broken, but I don't know it yet, because he could have announced it while I'm recording this. And tomorrow we have, like, a goddamn 13 games, every team that is not in the tournament playing. And I'm gonna go rest, man. As always, love yourselves. Be kind to yourself and to others. You're enough, we're enough. Just be and peace.